This work and the symposium have been generously supported by the Irma and Paul Milstein Family Foundation, longtime benefactors of this museum, for whose generosity the Milstein Family Hall of Ocean Life is named. That extraordinarily gorgeous gallery is presided over by the magnificent Blue Whale, one of the museum's most well-known and popular icons. And it is also a great educational resource depicting the many types of marine systems. The hall is celebrating its own anniversary, its 10th, for its, since its glorious restoration and updating. And I will hope you will take the opportunity today and throughout the conference for, to visit the poster session and reception and see that magnificent gallery. We are especially proud, therefore, to have with us this morning Howard Milstein representing the Milstein Family Foundation, generous sponsors of that hall and of this symposium. Howard is one of this city's great civic leaders who is deeply committed to scientific advancement and to sharing the fruits of that work with a broad public here at the museum and with his work with many other organizations. He is smart, curious, savvy, and committed, and his sponsorship is both generous and enlightened. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Howard Milstein. Thank you, Ellen, for that warm welcome. And uh, I thought that was a very interesting uh, note that you sounded, that islands are, in effect, the geological frogs of our early warning system. And uh, hopefully, when those frogs are kissed by this symposium, they'll turn into princes. <laughs> I've always felt at home here ever since my mother brought us as kids to the whale room uh, a long time before it was the Milstein Hall of Ocean Life. And we've been privileged to support this museum for two generations. Given that long history, it's a special joy to welcome such a distinguished group of speakers. You've come from around the globe to address the theme of islands, a topic that takes on more urgency with each shift in climate and ecology and each shift of the major and minor tectonic plates that undergird many of the world's islands. Since ancient times, islands have held a special place in our imaginations and literature. Homer's Odyssey, Shakespeare's Tempest, Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, to name a few. But islands are more than scenic locations. Their very form and isolation helps to shape narratives. It also exposes them to peculiar ecological and social stresses. My family is proud to be associated with this symposium. These three days will witness a groundbreaking collaboration of experts from universities, foundations, civil societies, and research museums. For this forum, the American Museum of Natural History has assembled world-class scientists from Australia, India, Indonesia, the South Pacific, the Caribbean, Honduras, and elsewhere. I don't want to give short, short shrift to our distinguished American colleagues, but those other places do require more effort to get here. I myself have just returned from doing some relaxing field work in the Hawaiian Islands. I see we have our uh, participants from Hawaii here. Uh, which are hi highlighted in your program. And Hawaii, of course, is due north of two other island areas you'll be discussing, Tahiti and the Cook Islands. One issue worth thinking about is how to relate human history and time to geologic time. Hawaii illustrates the problem where the oldest island, now Kure Atoll, is 28 million years old, the big island, 400,000 years old, and the newest island, Loihi, is still submerged and growing to the extreme southeast. From volcanic birth to subsidence through erosion, more time than humans have been on the planet. So on behalf of the Milstein family, I wish you productive sessions as you reflect on ecological and social resilience in island systems. All of us greatly look forward to the shared lessons and policy recommendations that come out of your efforts.